What is up turtles? Crick here with Black Isle Outdoors and today we're going to be talking about the blood bubble, what it is, and why it's important. So the blood bubble comes into play when you're swinging hand tools and what prompted this video was our mountain camp series where Stoney and I are up at our mountain camp, which we are today, and we're using hand tools, swinging hand tools, and we're around each other. When I first heard it referred to as the blood bubble was when I was working in Arizona doing trail work, conservation work. And I've worked with hand tools for most of my life. I've done landscaping, all sorts of outdoor work, but it's really important when you're working in closed quarters. So inherently, this is a dangerous tool. Take a look at this tool head. This is all metal. Could you imagine what it would look like if you accidentally hit someone on the side of the head with this? And this isn't even a sharp tool. This is just the pick side. Taking a look at the matic side. Again, this isn't even sharp, but could you imagine what it would look like if this hit someone with a hard swing? Not a pretty sight. So this is why the blood bubble is important. To determine the blood bubble, what you want to do is take the tool you're going to be using and swinging and extend it away from your body. I do it to my left. Do it to my right. And what that does is give me a distance where before I start using my tool, if anyone's inside of this circle, out to my left, 360 around me. If anyone's inside of that circle, don't start using the tool. And what that does is just make sure you're aware of your surroundings, your situational awareness is on point. So as you're using the hand tool, you are responsible for knowing who's around you and what they're doing. On the other side of that, if you're working around someone who's swinging a tool, it's again, your responsibility to make sure you're not walking or violating that person's blood bubble. All right, so dramatization. If I'm getting ready to use this tool and there's other people around me. I don't have to physically hold the tool out. You can gauge how far someone is from you and create that safe space. But what I do is look around, look above me too, because I'm working in the trees, make sure there's no branches above me that the tools are gonna to get caught on especially if you're gonna plan a swing overhead. You get a lot of force swinging a tool over your head, but you definitely increase the danger. Rock. So this was just for illustrative purposes. Being in this rocky soil, swinging overhead, really isn't a great technique because there's so many rocks, the tool's gonna glance, bounce off. It could potentially hurt your hands if you're hitting a rock. So what I do is just grub up here working a lot, but I was just showing for illustrative purposes what it looks like if you're swinging a tool. This was just a quick little tip to share with you, safety precautions, especially when you're in the forest. Safety mines is way more important because if you're miles kilometers away from definitive care, you don't want to have a traumatic injury to yourself or have to deal with someone else becoming injured. So let me know what you think about this. I know it's probably called other things besides the blood bubble. So if you have any other safety tips while using hand tools, especially in close quarters with other folks, let me know, leave a comment. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks for your support. We'll probably be filming another camp update video we might be up here doing some more work sooner than later our patrons thank you as always till the next video this is crick and stony with black owl later turtles